G'day guys, welcome back to the show. This is of course Full Power Pillock and today what we're doing is we're going to be testing Ilmango's farm for moss and bone meal in bedrock to see whether or not it works and whether or not we can actually turn a profit just on an infinite basis of free bone meal. So we are of course in the latest snapshot that well, not snapshot, I should say uh, beta that's recently come out on Friday. It's only since the one on Friday that we've actually been able to do anything close to this because basically the problem that we did have was any time that we tried to do something along this line where, say for instance, we had a piston and a moss block, what would happen is that moss block would actually get pushed. However, now it gets broken. And that's very important because it was impossible to actually do anything like this prior to that point. So now what we want to do is test this machine that we have here today, which is kind of like a bedrocked modified version of his machine, albeit a somewhat slow one, but I can't imagine it being much more quicker in real life anyway. And we can use this to test as to see how possible this is to actually turn a profit from bone meal. So if we get rid of these items here and we have 64 bone meal and we just chuck it into the machine, then we should be able to see whether or not this actually works. So as you can see, what will happen is that as we get all the moss blocks actually build up and be converted from the stone, it will get broken by the actual lava stone generator, I guess you could call it. That's probably the best name for it. And everything on top basically just gets swept away by all the water. Now, I am doing the water in a slightly different way. You'd probably notice that the pistons may be a bit glitchy. This is, this is of course, one of the betas. And apparently waterlogged pistons don't always display properly at the moment. But that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I don't think it's actually meant for that. So let's uh, have a look at the machine, what we've got so far, and some of the important points of designing these farms. So as you can see here, very simple sort of uh, configuration. I do have waterlogged pistons behind here. All that's happening is that this row of lava is basically falling down, creating stone, and then it gets pushed by the pistons, all controlled by this hopper clock at the back, I guess you could call it. It is a hopper clock, but it's also got another extension just for an actual pulse that continues going on. Uh, yeah, as far as the actual speed of this goes, unfortunately, this is really hitting the maximum speed of what we're going to get in bedrock, mainly because it does take time for the actual lava to come down. And if you do have a look at the points where it does push the stone, it is pretty much almost cutting it as fine as I can. So I'm not really able to make it any more faster than this for a stone generator. If we have a look over here, this is just basically a simple control circuit so I can turn things off. Over here we have yet another hopper clock. A bit of a strange design. You wouldn't see anything like this ever occurring in Java version, mainly because of how things are situated and that sort of thing. But it basically just goes along here, powers both this piston on top and also this moss block with a dispenser of our bone meal. Now, the bone meal, what has to happen here is much the same as what we get in Java, where it has to actually grow something on top for the ones underneath it to propagate. The problem with that is that if you don't get rid of whatever's on top of it, then you basically won't be able to bone meal it again. So that's what this piston does, is that it gets rid of whatever's on top so that we can bone meal it again. Now, you may notice this line here, this line that exists and it's where nothing sort of occurs, does happen in Java as well. What's happening is that because we've have got a block, well, some blocks above it, what will happen is that anything that's basically below it can't be turned into moss blocks, won't grow any sort of foliage or anything like that. So yeah, it's kind of a non-use situation. It does make it a bit more difficult to design these machines. I mean, this is basically as thin as you're going to be able to get a machine and you're missing out on four blocks worth of generation, which does sort of hurt the efficiency of the machine, but there's not really much you can do about it. 
it's just a limiting factor of things. So for instance, if I had this piston to the side, there'd be another block where nothing would ever grow. You need to have sky access to whatever area that you have for it to actually be converted. So how many is actually converted at a time is very random. I mean, you may make a profit, you may not. I think with this machine, as far as the efficiency levels go and the speeds go, it's getting pretty much as close to the limit of how efficient this machine could possibly be. You're not really going to be seeing it any more faster. So let's see where we're up to. Yeah. Yeah, we're down to a 42. We won't have a look yet, we won't cheat yet, but I'll go over a few more design factors. So underneath here, you notice that it's all completely solid blocks. That is because if we don't have solid blocks underneath it, then as you can see, the some of the stone that gets converted into the moss blocks will actually drop down beneath, and it means that we miss out on all the moss blocks. So you need to have a completely sealed floor. There's a lot going on here. I will, of course, add a 3D model as well as a world download that can only, unfortunately, be opened in the current beta. But uh, yeah, you're free to check it out. I'll even chuck up for you guys right now just the coordinates of where this final version actually ended up being. Uh, you, you can probably see that I've made a few attempts and played around with a few different things. But yeah, this is pretty much the final version. So head to these coordinates and you should find this machine. I will have to remember to turn it off. If you don't turn off machines in uh, the current betas, things uh, sort of don't work too well. So that's something. And you know, this is obviously not the most stable beta <laughs> around, but hey, I've seen a lot worse. It, it's, it's not too bad to be honest. So uh, yeah. Having a look at this machine, it does seem like it's doing pretty well. I've, I've got a bit of an idea as to how it will go. And we are officially halfway through now. So if we, I'm not, I'm not going to have a look. We're, we're going to wait until the very end to be able to have a look. You'll notice that the redstone that I've used is kind of a bit janky. It, it's not great. I mean, yeah, things could be improved. I mean, Probably having the switch in a different way would be nicer, but as far as it actually working goes, my main sort of prerogative with this one was basically recreating the farm so that it could actually work. It, the timings are incredibly crazy when it comes to bedrock. You, you've got to take into account errors. While we are waiting for the machine to actually complete, I thought that it'd be worthwhile actually talking to you about this. So you probably noticed that my machine works a lot slower even though it's working on the same ideas. Bedrock is kind of, I guess from an engineer's point of view, a lot more like real life than what Java is. You see, Bedrock is prone to errors and problems and complications and things like that occurring. And that's pretty, pretty consistent with the engineering world. <laughs> expect a lot of problems. Don't, don't ever expect for things to go your way. So that's, that's kind of, the problem with timings and things like that with bedrock is that you have to take into account some degree of things not firing off at the exact right time and things like that. But overall, I, th I think that it's not too bad. I, I think that it's pretty, pretty close. I mean, I could have it sort of half a tick quicker. It doesn't really make the whole thing quicker though. So yeah, it, it's probably going to be as about as fast as you're going to get unfortunately but hey that that's how it goes sometimes so let's see where we are up to down to 24 we are getting closer it looks like the machine's firing away quite strongly there now il mango did have two of these uh composters over here i'm only using one because i want to try and push this to the absolute maximum efficiency that we can get because having two, you could end up with both of them half full or both of them three quarters full. We're, we're going to go for every last piece of bone meal that we can with this machine. If you redesign this in your world, then feel free to add as many as you want. It's probably not going to make too much of a difference. But as far as for testing goes, it's important that we only have one. Just so that we know exactly 
what we can randomly get in this world. So let's see what we're down to now. 19. 19. We are getting there. It, it's really not quick. <laughs> you, you're probably going to want to construct a lot of these, I'm guessing. Okay, and that is it for this machine. So it has depleted its stack of 64. We'll switch it off. And now we'll just let the final amounts come through so that we can get an exact amount of how much we were able to get. This, of course, is subject to random changes and all the rest of the sort of stuff. So you take it with a pinch of salt. You may get more, you may get less. It's just a bit random. But overall, this machine, as far as for testing goes, it's about as efficient as you're going to get. You're not going to get much more efficient. There is this downside where you do miss out on that small strip. So that is a bit of a problem. And aside from that, I, I think overall, it's it's not too bad a machine. I mean, you need to make these walls too high, like your mangoes, mainly because otherwise they may pop off over the side. As I said, having the four with something underneath it is a must. But overall, I, I think it's pretty good. Making sure that everything looks like it's all done, which it probably is. All right, let's see if we've made a profit or a loss. And we've definitely made a profit. So we've got basically two and a half stacks taking away from our original 64 that we put into it. We basically got a stack and a half-ish, a bit more than uh, what we would have had. So realistically, this farm is a little bit slower than Skeleton Farm, and it is obviously a lot slower than what your Mango's version was in Java because of piston speeds and things like that. But overall, I think this is a good level because basically it's not super overpowered to the point where you're going to be able to have ridiculous amounts of bone meal easily. To, to get more bone meal faster, you need to build more machines and you can't stack these on top of each other. You have to build them next to each other over and over and over again. So there really isn't a sort of shortcut as far as I can see so far as to making these machines. And you really have to be very mindful over how much area you're actually taking away from what can be grown underneath. Because, yeah, I, I could have an auto feed system that goes in from this chest and into this uh, dispenser right here. But the problem is that's probably going to take up even more of the land and remove the possible generation of what moss we can have underneath. So realistically, that may actually be one of those deciding factors that even though this is technically fully automatic, if you've got to basically put the actual bone meal in by hand to actually make it work, well, it kind of takes away that full automaticness to it. And yeah, you can sacrifice a little bit, but you may not end up turning a profit. So yeah, it's it's something quite complicated. I think that if you really wanted to, you could probably have a flying machine with a dropper on it and basically have it come over and wait for a while and then fly back. That would probably work well. But uh, aside from that, I mean, having this thing fully automatic without flying machines would be quite, uh, quite difficult. I, I might play around with that a little bit in future and see how hard it would be to drop off a couple stacks worth of bone meal with a flying machine. It's not too bad in bedrock at least, but uh, overall at least it does work. And I'll say in bedrock, it's it's not as fast as a skeleton farm because we have things like trident killers and overall you can build it anywhere. So I think this is fantastic. And that's probably where I'll end the video guys. Thanks for watching as always. If you like the channel, like subscribe and now oh, you know where the button is. I'm not gonna tell you where it is. And I'll catch you as always in the next one, guys. See ya.